Rise of the Tomb Raider takes place one year after the events of the 2013 reboot, and since then, Lara Croft has had a hard time explaining the supernatural events that she had experienced a year ago. Seeking answers, Laura looks into her father's research and discovers that his final expedition was to locate a lost city which was believed to hold a mysterious force which had the power of immortality. However, when her father's research is stolen by a secret organization known as Trinity, Laura is forced into a race against time in order to reach the mystical source first and prevent it from getting into the hands of Trinity. Now, I've never actually been a fan of the Tomb Raider series at least until the 2013 reboot, and I enjoyed that installment so much that I went so far as to say that the story for that Tomb Raider game was superior to that of the first three installments of Naughty Dog's Uncharted series. But after all the anticipation, and even waiting an entire year to finally play this next installment on the PlayStation 4, I'm happy to say that Rise of the Tomb Raider was well worth the wait in every single department. With the narrative of Rise of the Tomb Raider continuing from its previous installment, this time we see a much more mature version of Laura Croft simply wanting to finish her father's work, believing that this discovery will in many ways benefit mankind. Throughout the course of the game, Laura goes through a number of character changes that have her question her goal and even help establish her as an individual simply wanting to do what she feels is right. I was also very impressed with the rest of the supporting cast on the protagonist side, especially one specific character named Jacob who has quite a mysterious presence about him, but once you discover his secret, I'm sure even the most analytical gamers won't see this twist coming. But what really surprised me the most was how much depth was given into the main antagonist, that being the leader of the Trinity forces, Constantine. He's far from being your typical cliche bad guy simply wanting power for power's sake, but he actually has good intentions and for many portions of the game, I could really understand and sympathize with why he was doing what he was doing making him one of the best developed antagonists for a video game that I've seen in some time. For anyone who enjoyed the 2013 reboot and has not had a chance to experience this game before, then this title is a must play as the main story will not only bring back everything you loved about the first game, but it perfectly brings a new set of narrative elements that actually help in exceed its predecessors, leaving off on a pretty good cliffhanger giving you some insight clues on exactly what we can expect for a follow-up game for this installment. Just like the 2013 reboot, Rise of the Tomb Raider serves as a third-person action-adventure game that has you take control of Laura Croft once more as you explore through various and expansive environments, fight against a very large variety of enemies including militarized enemies and dangerous wildlife, and you will also be required to use your wits and your ability to use all of the equipment and Laura's athletic abilities to complete very unique and designed puzzles. In terms of the exploration, the game is very much given a much more open world feeling rather than a standard linear style. By doing this, it allows the player to have much more freedom to explore just about any location at any time. As you play through the main campaign, you will come across many fire campsites that can act as fast travel locations which makes exploring much more fast paced. There are also a great deal of secret caves that you can explore, along with hidden tombs that you can explore if you choose. And if you happen to succeed with these tombs, you will be granted an exclusive upgrade that you cannot achieve through normal means. The combat gameplay has also been expanded upon, along with having a much larger variety of enemies, including militarized enemies, along with dangerous wildlife, which will require you to use the environment itself to your advantage as your opponents will be able to attack you in a multitude of different ways and from various different locations. By having a much more open world gameplay style, it gives you more options on how to proceed in combat. You can use the bushes and cover base areas to dispose of your enemies quietly, or if you choose to go entirely Rambo and just wipe out all the enemies with overwhelming firepower, you can. You will also need to monitor your resources and ammunition supply during combat as you will be able to craft unique forms of ammunition for a multitude of different weapons to help you move through difficult combat scenarios. The upgrade and customization system has also returned, and as you collect equipment parts, collect different animal skins, kill a certain amount of enemies, or even complete specific objectives, you can upgrade either Laura's Combative Skills tree, or you can choose to customize any of your weapons however you choose. 
You also have access to a large collection of different outfits for Laura to wear, that many have special functions that can aid during specific situations and conditions. There is also the addition of a number of unique design and creative boss fights spread throughout the game that can be quite challenging as well as being able to communicate and talk to local civilians and form alliances that can aid you in combat. After finishing the main campaign, you can play through one of the many DLC additions as well as a new story chapter called Blood Ties that has Laura back at the Croft Mansion in an attempt to discover more mysteries about her parents. And there is even a VR mode added for those of you who have picked up the PlayStation VR and wish to try it out there. In conclusion, in terms of gameplay, the developers at Square Enix and Edo Studios simply took the gameplay formula from the 2013 reboot and expanded upon it, giving it a much more updated and smoother experience this time around. Having Rise of the Tomb Raider take place in a much different kind of environment brought forth a lot of development challenges for Edo Studios and Square Enix to tackle, but they managed to pull it off with ease. The level design is simply incredible as they are built upon a multitude of layers requiring much climbing to traverse the environment, as well as capturing the feeling of what it would be like to explore the abandoned ruins of a Soviet facility. The use of realistic bioreactions is a great addition to this title as you will be able to visibly see the physical reactions to the temperature of the weather that Laura will have to encounter. The visuals are also very impressive, not just on the environment but on the character models themselves, capturing realistic facial expressions allowing one to even get a better sense of what one character is feeling and thinking at any one given time. The soundtrack also adds to the atmosphere, having perfect timing and adding to the suspense when a big and impressive action set piece takes place. The frame rate from beginning to end ran extremely smooth and at no time did I experience any glitching or technical issues. In all design wise, Rise of the Tomb Raider feels like a perfect follow up. It takes advantage of the current Just system's advantages over the previous generation consoles and applies them. Everything that you enjoyed in 2013's reboot is improved upon and expanded upon without feeling too overdone. As I'm sure you can tell by now, I absolutely loved Rise of the Tomb Raider. It is what I call a perfect sequel and simply flawless in just about every single department. The story is very emotional, in-depth, has a lot of great characters, and very memorable. This is absolutely something I would recommend someone trying out if you haven't played it the first time. In terms of gameplay, it simply took everything that the first installment in the 2013 reboot did right and simply expanded upon it without really changing the feeling of the game, making it very, very adaptable, and making me able to jump right in and play it. And with a much different environment, capturing a much different atmosphere, it feels entirely new to me, which was something I very much enjoyed. In terms of game design, the visuals are not the best that I've seen this generation, but visuals aren't everything. But in every single other department in terms of the music and how the game actually operates, playing very smoothly, although I'm willing to admit that it does play maybe a little bit smoother on the PC, it really is a perfectly designed game. Now, I stated this earlier in the video by stating that I felt personally that 2013's Tomb Raider was actually better than the entire Uncharted trilogy. And I know that for some hardcore Uncharted fans you're not going to like me saying this, but I'm afraid that continues into the current gen systems. Because I personally feel that Rise of the Tomb Raider is better than Uncharted 4. That's not a knock against Uncharted 4 because this is still a masterpiece of a game. It is absolutely a system seller and a must own for anyone who owns PlayStation 4. But the only advantage that I would give Uncharted 4 over Tomb Raider is that it has better visuals and since it's a PlayStation exclusive, that's kind of a given. But again, these are both must own titles. I would just personally favor Rise of Tomb Raider a little bit more. So, seeing how, in my opinion, it's a flawless game, there's only one score that I can give Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is something that I have not really given to too many games really over the course of my channel. The only score that I can give Rise of the Tomb Raider, and giving it the highest recommendation on my channel, is a 10 out of 10. A perfect score. If you have not played this yet, please pick this game up. You will not regret it. If you like my game review, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to check out my future game reviews. And like always, thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I'll see you next time.